Hello again. In this presentation, we're going to have a look at some of the basic concepts that we need to know about electrochemistry so that we understand functioning of fuel cells. It's going to be a very brief review of things that you might already know, but I think it's quite interesting if we have a brief look. As you might know from previous um, presentations, fuel cells are electrochemical devices that allow us obtaining electrical power directly from the chemical energy of the components. This happens through some um, redox reactions and the main aspect of fuel cells is that because we're going to use a straight way the energy conversion will be very efficient compared to other devices which allow intermediate states such as thermal engines. In general terms an oxidation reaction consists on the transfer of some electrons between a component and the other. In this case, this we're going to have a look again. Eh? Beautiful. This change of electrons is going to promote a voltage, which is obviously electrical energy, that we could eventually use to have this energy for us. It is very important that this reaction takes place under convenient conditions, otherwise this energy cannot be profit. At least two agents must be involved in these redox reactions. The first one is the fuel, which is the compound which is going to be oxidized. This element will lose one or two electrons, number of electrons, and will then oxidize, and these electrons will go will be accepted by the oxidant, which is usually oxygen from the air. On the other hand, fuel can be hydrogen, methanol, ethanol, or other component which can be oxidized by the effect of oxygen. It is very important when we're talking about electrochemistry in knowing what electric potentials are. Any redox reaction is going to produce a um, voltage which uh, is going to represent the amount of electrical energy that we can obtain from this reaction. All the reactions, redox reactions, imply at least a reduction and an oxidation and they are all referred to a reference reaction which is the reduction of hydrogen which is considered to be a reduction potential of zero volts. Then for any pair of reduction and oxidation reactions, we can have standard values. We can order the different reactions of reduction or oxidation into a table like this one that I'm showing in this representation and depending on how oxidizing they are or how reduction they are, I mean which is trend if they are and uh, they have more tendency to win electrons or just to lose them. It is also very important when we put two species together to know which of them is going to act as the oxidizer and which is going to be acting as the reducer. For this we need to um, locate them in this table and see which are their uh, potential, uh, the reduction potentials and in general terms compounds with higher uh, reduction potentials which in this table are placed behind um, on the on the bottom will oxidize those which are placed a bit uh, upper on the table. If we put the two reactions together, in this case the reduction reaction involving copper ion and the oxidation reaction involving zinc, we have the overall reaction which is the sum of the balls. Then to calculate the potential of the overall reaction, hmm, we only have to um, sum the two potentials, considering that we've changed this reduction reaction into an oxidation, and therefore this sign has also changed. This will be a sign of um, the potential that we can obtain for this reduction in terms of electrical energy and correspond to the maximum voltage that we ever gonna have if we would put these two species together to form a fuel cell or a cell engineering, like in a battery. Um, 
In fuel cells, as we said before, fuel cells use these uh, redox reactions in several conditions, but there are only a few redox reactions used in fuel cells because um, there are not many compounds which have been used as the fuels. The most common compound used in fuel cells is hydrogen, which is oxidized by oxygen and following these reactions, for example, in acid medium. In this case, and as you can see, this would be a representation of the maximum energy that we could obtain uh, under some conditions from a fuel cell which is built by using hydrogen and oxygen. As we said before, there are only a few reactions that we will use in fuel cells and most of them using hydrogen and oxygen. Depending on the conditions, depending on the temperature or the pressure, these reactions will slightly vary, but at the end we're going to have um, the same overall reaction, which is the formation of water and electrical energy. It is also important to note that even though uh, fuel cells have the same electrochemical vices as batteries, they are not exactly the same. Fuel cells depend on the supply of uh, oxygen and of fuel, and this supply must be continuous. It's because the fuel is being used, and at the same time, energy is being produced. That's what's called an open system. On the other hand, batteries are closed systems and we can eventually recharge them. Uh, also important to uh, note that these systems work irreversibility uh, because they are not working at the equilibrium and this will cause also some problems to the fuel cell as we will see in our presentation of this course. But if there is something that I would like to make clear in this presentation and this is something that I will be coming back to later on is that for these reactions for a fuel cell to act as an electrochemical system with this high efficiency it is necessary that these two reactions oxidation and reduction take place separately in different sides of the cell otherwise we will have a common combustion reaction and we will have some energy, that's right, but this will be thermal energy and not electrical energy as we want. This is a key point that we will um, probably be studying in our presentation of this course. To sum up, fuel cells use electrochemical reactions which are quite simple and not many indeed. We can obtain high amounts of energy uh, per each cell and in practice, um, the most important is to have these reactions, oxidation and reduction reactions, taking place at separate sites of the, field of the cell, or we will have a very important loss of efficiency. So that's all we wanted to talk about in this presentation. Once again, thank you for your attention.